YouTube team keep you know what let me get cleaned up real quick all right that's a little bit better probably the only person that could go clean up and come back looking even worse but anyway YouTube team keep it clean what's going on how y'all doing I hope all of y'all are great or even better than great whatever better than great is I hope that's you Ravens Saints oh they got a game coming up on Monday night football the world will be watching um and, and these baltimore ravens in this game against the saints their depth especially their offensive depth is going to be tested yet again yet again uh now now of course in the game last week it seems like that game was so long ago it seemed like that game was ages ago the game last week against the tampa bay bucks their depth was tested then because Rashad Bateman started, but he left early. Mark Andrews started, but he left early. Gus Edwards started, but he left a little later in the game. So running back wasn't tested as much as it could be this Monday night. Now, um, Rashad Bateman, obviously he's been declared out. He's done for the season. I don't know what's even taking them so long to put him on injury reserve, but obviously they will eventually that will open up a roster spot. Who will take that roster spot? We'll see is to be determined. Um, Mark Andrews. Now, Mark Andrews, a little different from last week. And th this was something that I noticed. And let me know if I'm wrong, if, if last week was actually the same, but I'm pretty sure last week Mark Andrews was questionable, even though he hadn't practiced all week. This week, Mark Andrews is doubtful after not having practice all week so i actually think this could be the game that breaks mark andrew's streak of not missing a game due to injury and hey ravens it's okay records are meant to be broken streaks are meant to be ended well minus ravens preseason winning streak but streaks are meant to be ended it's okay let the streak go we want Mark Andrews for the long haul. Y'all saw what happened to Rashad Bateman. He wasn't all the way ready. You saw, you almost, you saw what happened to Mark Andrews last week where he wasn't all the way ready. Couldn't even finish the game. I don't even think he finished the first quarter. Neither one of them two, I don't believe. Sit him. Just sit him. We love Mark Andrews. We know what he brings to the offense. We know he is a dog and a half. But let him rest. Put that dog in the kennel for this game. Let him chill out. Let him take it easy. Because this, this could be a chance to get Mark Andrews at the healthiest that he could possibly be for the remainder of the season. You rest him now. He'll have rested some of that Thursday night game. Then those 10, 11 days after. Then this week. And then we got the bye week. Let him heal up. This offense is going to, the depth in this offense is going to be tested. Gus Edwards is another one. He hasn't been ruled out of the game, but he is also, along with Mark Andrews, doubtful. Ray, we love Gus Edwards. He has brought so, like, instantly, he's brought so much to this Ravens team. And I think, yeah, he came back for the Browns game. Obviously played in the Bucks game and was huge in both. Ravens are undefeated with Gus Edwards. And I know it's a small sample size, but hey, it is what it is. The facts are the facts, right? But anyway, um, rest him. Rest him. If he ain't all the way ready, rest him. Because again, just like with Mark Andrews, it's the same thing. It's the healthiest you're going to be. You, you got such a big opportunity here. And I know Ravens want to win this game. I expect them to, but... Ravens want to win this game, and you want your best players to play every single game. And Gus Edwards is the best player on uh, this Ravens team at his position. Mark Andrews is obviously the best player on this team at his position. But you got to think of the long haul more than the short haul. And y'all were doing that earlier. Y'all did it with Ronnie Stanley earlier. They did it with J.K. Dobbins earlier. But they didn't do it with Rashad Bateman last week. And... Whether his injury was the same that it was before the game, and then he just said, all right, I'm going to get surgery, or if it was changed because of the game, hey, I don't know. But Ravens need to make sure they learn their lesson in that department. Um, Demarcus Robinson, he 
Somebody who's a, a depth wide receiver guy, veteran depth wide receiver guy, he got uh, added to the injury report as well. So he's questionable with a groin injury. So he he has a much higher chance of playing than the doubtful guys. Um, but that's something to keep an eye on too, because we remember. I remember Marlon Humphrey. I think it was a Dolphins game where he was questionable with a groin injury. He played, but then he had to come out the game. So just because somebody's questionable with an injury, especially a groin injury, they may play, but they may see a limited number of snaps. They may see limited action. So in this game against the New Orleans Saints, oh, it's going to be in New Orleans too. Shout out to anybody that's going to be going. Um, it is obviously going to be Devin Duvernay time, but this could be James Prochet's biggest game of his career. Not even of the season, of his career. And it'll be a lot different in my opinion. If James Prochet does get the snaps, if James Prochet does get the targets, uh, it'll be the biggest game of his career. Much bigger than that game even last year against the Bengals where he caught like seven catches for 77 yards. The numbers may not be like that. I mean, it'd be nice if they exceeded that. But the numbers may not be like that. But the reason I say this could be the biggest game of his career is because of just the opportunity that could possibly be in front of him. Because early on this season, he was hurt. He was the one that was out for a couple of games. But now, obviously, Bateman's out. Demarcus Robinson, not 100%. Ain't nobody else in front of him for now. I think Deshaun Jackson will end up being. But for now, James Prochet could have a big opportunity in front of him. A huge one. So it's important that he take full advantage of that. Now, I, I mean, I hope that uh, it doesn't go like last year when he went a seven catch for 77 yards. James Prochet, that was biggest game of his career. Then he was like a healthy scratch for like the rest of the season almost. So, okay, well, all right. right. Anyway, um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Lamar Jackson, Greg Roman, this is such – an important game uh, for both of those two to be on their A game because sad story. I mean, it is what it is, though. So much relies on them. So, so, so many people rely on them. The offense relies on them. And this is such a huge game for both of those two. Um, Greg Roman, it's important that he put guys in position to have success he plays guys to their strengths, and it's important that him and Harbaugh, they give different guys opportunities. They mix it up. They make this offense unpredictable. And they in the second half last week, we started seeing some of that. We really did, and it was like, oh. but And, and I know last week was just, it was great in the second half. We all loved it, but me, I, I told you I couldn't get too high on it. I loved it. But I couldn't get too high on it because I'm scared. And what I'm scared of is inconsistency from the Ravens, inconsistency from the personnel, inconsistency uh, from play calling. That scares me. Inconsistency when it comes to the use of somebody like Devin DuVernay. When DuVernay gets the ball and now, like, again, all, it's going to be all eyes on him. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Ravens really play this thing. When DuVernay gets the ball... Good things happen. When they be, get creative with Devin DuVernay, not just have him be the jet sweep king, because he still got his crown now. But when you throw in the ball, have him run the ball, have him line up in the backfield, line the ball up, when you do things like that, things go well. It's usually pretty positive. Have him involved in the screen game, all that stuff. But we've seen it before to where, like in the Bengals game, Devin do it all for Nate. He was killing it. Then the next game, they, they didn't have him doing any of that stuff. And it was like, what, what's going on? This is what scares me about the offense, the inconsistencies. We, we know the potential that they have. We know what they can do. But will they do it? Play calling is so important. Lamar Jackson. Mark Andrews, If I don't think he's going to play, but we won't know till Monday. But if Mark Andrews does or does not play, it's important that obviously guys get open. 
But it's important that Lamar sees those guys. It's important that Lamar examines from left to right, continues to go through his reads, and hit his guys. This, again, the, a big part of that, in my opinion, is the short passing game. Everything ain't got to be a deep ball. Everything ain't got to be this long, slow developing play. The short game can make such a big difference because it gets a rhythm going for Lamar and the receivers. It gets the different guys involved early. It gets the ball out of his hands quick. It keeps the offense moving. If they could go to that quick passing game and then, of course, throw some deep stuff in there, too. <laughs> we know they will. They got Deshaun Jackson now. He's expected to play in this game. But if they can do that, that can just make everybody's job that much easier. And it'll get their hands involved that much easier. You feel for the receivers sometimes because they can be in a game for a while and their hands might start to get a little cold. He's like, man, I ain't touched that ball all game. Give me some of that, please. But if you get that short game involved early, you get the short game going, then that allows different guys to get their hands on the ball sooner and get really get warmed up so they can continue to do that uh, through all four quarters. So very important. In the run game, uh, with Gus Edwards probably not going to play, um, Ken Drake and Justice Hill, a lot will be on those two. Now, um, from the 20 to the 20, I ain't really concerned about that for the run game. I think those, those guys will be just fine. But my biggest concern uh, comes in the red zone on the goal line. Um, and I know Justice Hill, he has this underrated strength as a running back. Underrated strength for sure. Um, but I, I am a little concerned about how their usage will be and their effectiveness when the Ravens are in goal line situations, when they on the four yard line, the five yard line, even the one yard line, how will they run that ball? I would love, especially with Gus Edwards being out, I would love to see the Ravens really implement Pat Ricard in the short short yardage game. And this is not even just in the red zone or on the goal line, but this is just on the field in general. I mean, they, you use Pat Ricard everywhere else. Why not right here? In a short run game. So th this, this is just going to be such a big game for the Ravens offense to see if they can maintain consistency. Because Saints, they got some playmakers over there on that defense, man. Don't sleep on this on the Saints team. Don't sleep on the Saints defense. They got some playmakers over there. So will the Ravens be able to capitalize? Will the Ravens be able to continue to ride this wave that they kind of got going on right now? They have won two games in a row they have the opportunity to win three three games in a row for the first time all season and i mean i mean they won two games in a row for the first time all season why not continue the streak why not it, it just it makes sense now flipping it to the defensive side of the ball no well real quick special teams justin tucker you have a big advantage in this game because unless they turn the ac on high there will be no wind. There's no weather. It's a dome. So you're straight. You're straight. You're going to boot that thing as far as you want to. Justin Tucker got a big advantage in this one. Now, special teams, Devin Duvernay. We'll see if his usage changes on special teams. I would expect it to. They'll probably have Justice Hill at kick return, I would think. At punt return, um, maybe they'll put James Prochet back there uh, just to be safe. Uh, we'll see. I'm not sure what they're going to do there. But I, I don't expect just, I mean, excuse me, I don't expect Devin Duvernay to be uh, Mr. Special Teams in this game because he'll be, he should be being relied upon a lot more than the norm. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. We'll see how the Ravens play him uh, on Monday night. Now, flipping it uh, to the defensive side of the ball. The defense, um, I know uh, Marcus Peters. Um, he is on uh, the questionable list. Uh, he, he should play, though. But um, Ravens defense, Malik Harrison, he's also questionable, too. He'll probably play as well. But, I mean, I, I think Ravens, they, they got to be on an A game, man. I think they will get at least two turnovers in this game. But at the same time, I still feel like it's going to be stressful because of Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is not afraid of the Ravens. Now, we want the Ravens to make Andy Dalton afraid of the Ravens. We want to make it look like he's scared. 
Um, but he's shown in, in the past he's not afraid. And again, Andy Dalton, he's a backup. He's a backup. What I always say about backups, man, they are the da- most dangerous people to play. Now, Andy Dalton, when he was a starter for the Bengals, he was one of the most dangerous people for the Ravens to play. But him as a backup with the Saints, that still makes him dangerous because he ain't got nothing to lose. He's at that point in his career where he knows he's a backup. He ain't got nothing to lose. What's he going to go out there and lose his starting spot? Okay. And? What would that mean? Now, of course, I'm sure he still wants to start, but when, when you're a backup and you know you're a backup, he may be starting for now for the Saints. He's starting over Jameis Winston, but he's not the long-term answer for the New Orleans Saints. And he knows that. He knows the game. He knows the business. He saw what happened to him. He, he, he knows it. So with that being said, you, you care less. Not that you play care less, but... You can care less. You ain't going to be all timid. You ain't going to be all shy. No, you're going to go out there taking chances, taking risks, and just going for it. So it's going to be important for the Ravens defense to be on their P's and Q's. I think this could be a big uh, game for Geno Stone. Um, reason I say that, because Andy Dalton will take some risks. He will. Um, Michael Thomas, he's out for the year. Um so that's a big blow. I mean, he's, he's been out for a while. Those Saints have been really injured, especially when it comes to uh, the wide receiver positions. It's been crazy for them, uh, just guys that have been out with injuries. Because they, they were loaded up there. They had signed Jarvis Landry. They obviously drafted Chris Olave. Um, But it's like they – and obviously Michael Thomas, he was back this year for a little bit. But those guys, they just been hurt, man. Hurt. Michael Thomas, he he been hurt for years, though. So – him being out, Saints are almost like at the point where it's like, okay, they like they can't rely on him. So, I wonder what'll happen this offseason. It's like every offseason, I always think Michael Thomas might be traded, but Saints keep on keeping on. But um, Ravens defense got to take advantage, man. They got to take advantage. Uh, Alvin Kamara, you know he going to get involved in the passing game. Uh, it's so important. Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, this your debut, baby. Mike McDonald, let's see how, because you, you got some assets over there on that defense. Let's see how you put them together. And the defense has been coming along. They've been coming along. They've been getting better and better every week. So this is an opportunity to really, like, shut it down, to really shut it down. I, I'll give it a couple drives even. I, I'll give it a couple drives. Let, let Roquan Smith get more acclimated because practice is one thing. Game speed is completely different. So I ain't, ain't going to trip off the first couple drives. I see Roquan Smith making the wrong pursuit or something like that, taking a bad angle or something like that. Ah, okay, okay, that's all right. But come late first, early second quarter, let's really see what this defense is made of. I mean, hopefully we see it from jump. But let's really see what this defense is made of. Team keep it clean. Uh, this should be a fun game. New Orleans, the, going against the Saints, it's always fun. It's a prime time game. And it's in New Orleans. You know them fans, they're gonna show out. They're gonna show out. But I know another fan base that they, they love to show out too. And they show up. And and that's the Ravens. So let's see how these boys do uh, against Andy Dalton in New Orleans. And hey, may the best team win. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.